네, 여러분 안녕하세요. 가을바람입니다. 오늘은 트위터에서 아이온큐에 대해서 이제 열심히 공부하고 계시고 이제 저의 역할을 이제 서방 쪽에서 하고 계시는 데스먼드라는 분을 모셔서 인터뷰를 좀 해보려고 하는데요. 어, 제가 준비한 질문들을 가지고 한번 얘기를 해보도록 하겠습니다. Hello, Desmond. Hi, hello, Sean. <laughs> it's great to finally talk to you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's great to finally meet you. I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a big follower of your uh, uh, YouTube. You do such a great job. Uh -huh. A lot of people just take information and kind of repost it, mm. or whatever, but you actually take it and really synthesize it and 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 di you know make it uh, accessible to everyone. Before we get started, I know who you are, but most of the viewers on my channel might not. So, could you give us a brief introduction of yourself? Sure. My name is Desmond, and um, I'm uh, very interested in investing. I'm a uh, I'm, I'm what you would call a retail investor. I take the time and the effort to really like. Look through and analyze uh, companies to see what uh, what investments are mm -hmm. uh, make the most sense uh, to me that are exciting and they're going to have great returns. My background, uh, I'm, I've been I'm a military veteran. Yes, yeah, so I was in uh, so I was in the Navy. My specific position, I worked with uh, communications technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once I finished uh, that, uh, I went to uh, graduate school, and then after graduate school, I started working. Um, as a uh, uh, a business administrator. Uh, and can I ask you about how roughly how many stocks you have, or roughly? Uh, I, I, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll disclose some of the stocks. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I don't okay. Think I'll <laughs> okay, it's, that's it's, fine. It's, it's, I, I will say that it's a lot. It, it's it's enough so that you'd be like, well, that's not very wise. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, very similar <laughs> like, to mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my. There's there's no balance. It's a very very concentrated portfolio, mm -hmm. and I have. I'm very, very confident in this company. Mm, you know, okay, I, I, okay. yeah, yeah, it, it is, it is. And I, mm. and I'm just going to keep adding. I, I, okay. I just think that, um, the yields, mm. you know, with, with this every year, it's going to be, uh, disproportionate, you know? So yeah, mm. I, I, I'm very, very, uh, uh, happy to to keep adding. Uh, I had a question about your background. So, do you have any degrees or any uh, backgrounds related to the quantum computing, or how did you get no, interested I not, in the quantum? No, no, computing? yeah. I mean, I have a my I I have a background in information technology. Okay, that's a I little bit related. <laughs> a little, like a little bit for IonQ, the um, applications to enterprise, you know, mm -hmm. that movement to enterprise and data centers and all that, mm -hmm. um, you know, the partnerships with Dell. I think mm -hmm. that that that's something that I feel comfortable with you mm -hmm. know, evaluating. But the tech, you know, the the, the physics and the chemistry, no, they, you shouldn't be, um, you shouldn't feel defeated mm -hmm. or disappointed or be like, that's not for me. That's not the case. If you mm -hmm. really, um. You, you, again, you do your research. Mm -hmm. You read the S four, the ten Q. You know the um, any documents mm -hmm. from the SEC yes. that the company. You actually take the time to read that. Most mm -hmm. people don't read that, Sean. They mm -hmm. just don't yes. read that. So I the company, the the, yeah, the company itself, it will say, "Here are our risks. Mm -hmm. This is what this is what our challenges would be." So you don't have to listen to the noise of what everyone else is saying. The company tells you themselves, like, "This is mm -hmm. what our challenges will be." So look, look at our hand phone, right? Our mm -hmm. hand phone. There's so much physics and chemistry in the hand phone, mm -hmm. in the mobile phone, that I don't understand, but I use it every day. Mm -hmm. So people should think the same way, you know, like just mm -hmm. because something you don't understand every single thing in detail, that's a myth um, to keep uh, regular people uh, mm -hmm. away from investing. Mm, I totally agree. I mean, I bet there's no one else who read the prospectus of IonQ besides me in Korea. It takes time. I get it. It's long in the language. You know, it can be a little boring because it can be mm. repetitive. But what ends up happening is, is that you start connecting the dots. Yeah, you know, I'm you start seeing like it makes you less anxious when mm -hmm. the, the stock price fluctuates. Mm -hmm. Yes. I because of the that. because of the volatility. Mm -hmm. If you know what you own, if you know and understand what's going on, the volatility isn't going to uh, mm -hmm. make you so anxious and nervous. It, it requires time. Mm -hmm. Most people, all they want to do is be like, very quickly, I just want to <laughs> buy it, it here and get out here, and that's yeah. it. And and you and I both know it takes a lot more work. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot more research and time than that. Not only have regular people not read it, a, a lot of like Wall Street people <laughs> haven't read the perspective. Yeah, like, we're, we're actually way way ahead of the game. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I could tell I, that I, by yeah. the journalist saying that physical qubit style everything. It's not true, and you know <laughs> it, it is. It's it's. I give them the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. that they're not. It's not intentional. It's not to be malicious. I mean, it's just lazy. They're lazy. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that IBM's in the lead, and mm -hmm. that's it. 
Uh, and when you actually look in uh, uh, deeper, mm -hmm. um, you, you understand that there's a difference. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what you think about the quantum computing uh, companies. So which company do you think is the best in the quantum uh, industry? And if it's IonQ, why do you think so? 100% IonQ. I'm biased. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you asked the right person. Like, I, I believe it's IonQ. Mm -hmm. So among all the other companies, that's what I like about IonQ is mm -hmm. their confidence. You know, if you sing uh, Peter mm -hmm. Chapman or Jun Sang Kim or Chris Monroe, they just, the leadership feels like, very confident mm -hmm. to me. The other, it, the main advantage of IonQ mm -hmm. is IonQ Durham. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many faces of IonQ, right? There's IonQ mm -hmm. uh, College Park. There's IonQ mm -hmm. Canada. There's IonQ uh, Israel and Germany. Mm -hmm. IonQ Bothell, uh, Washington with that huge mm -hmm. manufacturing facility, right? But what makes, to me, the heart of IonQ, but puts them, uh, what uh, the cutting edge, really, is IonQ Durham. Because that's where all the research mm -hmm. and, and, and groundbreaking work is done. You don't see people uh, criticizing uh, the Duke Quantum Center. That might be pound for pound the best uh, uh, quantum uh, for ion track quantum computing, mm -hmm. maybe in the world. And I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. I think what gives them an advantage is talent. The people that are, you know, joining IonQ. Mm -hmm. I think it's an important and a very uh, important benchmark and measure mm -hmm. and how you measure a company is what kind of people are joining the company. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing like people from like, you know, Google, Blue mm -hmm. Origin, NVIDIA, IBM, like these top names, NVIDIA, IBM, yeah. Exab yeah, exactly. People don't leave positions in great companies mm -hmm. for something they don't think is going to be the next thing. Mm -hmm. They yeah. just don't do that. And mm -hmm. I think that they show these people Mm -hmm. their product and what they see in the future. And they're like, I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the confidence, right? Like mm -hmm. they're confident. Two is uh, Durham, North, the mm -hmm. Duke Quantum Center. I think what they're doing there is important. And three is talent. The next question would be, who do you think are the competitors of IonQ and who might be the best competitor of IonQ? I think competitor one, competitor two, and competitor mm -hmm. three, the top three competitors for IonQ mm -hmm. is Quantum. Mm, what do you mean and by what, that? And what I mean by that is, is that the risk to IonQ is not mm. that some competitor mm -hmm. is going to do something better than them or some modality will be the, mm. the, the chosen modality. That's not the biggest risk. The biggest mm. risk is, is that quantum doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I don't think that what's keeping them up at, up at night is something that I, IBM is doing <laughs> or Google or Microsoft or you know, name your name, name the uh, competitor or, or, or uh, Rigetti, D Wave companies that you've you've covered in in, in your uh, YouTube coverage. What keeps INQ up at night? Their biggest competitor, and this is a very important point, is Quantum. I mean, I'm I'm so surprised that you say that because when I met Zhang Sang in person for the first time, and he mm. said the exactly same thing. He said the only competitor of INQ is classical computer. So basically, same as what you just said in INQ. Hugh's mission statement, mm -hmm. their mission statement, they don't say we're going to be the world's best mm -hmm. ion trap quantum computer. Mm -hmm. They say we're going to be the world's best quantum computer. Mm -hmm. Whatever whatever the case may be, whatever gets modality gets proven out, they're, they're basically saying IonQ is going to be there. Like mm -hmm. we're going to be here for a long, long time. We're going to be the big, we're going to be a market leader for a long time. I mean, with, uh, the other thing what Zhang Sang told me was that his lifelong mission is to make something impossible to possible. So that's what he's been doing for his whole lifetime and also for the IonQ. So I, I really trust in what, what he's doing and what IonQ is doing because I saw how serious he's about his research and about IonQ. And bringing the impossible to the possible. That's not something you do in two years or three. You know, you just don't roll out of bed. You know, some some of some startups and some companies, you feel like people just kind of rolled out of bed and were like, okay, mm -hmm. the scent seems cool, and I'll try this out, and then I want to make some money from it. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never got a sense at all from uh, uh, from from the from the founders that it's a money grab for them. Mm -hmm. This is something that they really think is going to be an inflection point for the 21st mm -hmm. century, and. And understand again, they've been doing this research for decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they've right. been, you know, they can't say it, but I, I can say it. I think that once th they achieve a on premises, you mm -hmm. know, quantum computer that is, you know, 64 or 256, you know, algorithmic cubic, mm -hmm. someone there, and it's working and selling to a customer, they're, they're going to be winning the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's Nobel Prize winning mm -hmm. uh, level achievement mm -hmm. because 
you know, I think you've seen the presentation where they they say, hey, that the uh, uh, a classical computer has more in common with an abacus than it does with a quantum computer. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like because it's so you know you're so different. because of solid state physics. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just that's how that's how dramatic the shift mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. So when do you think IonQ will make significant revenue and the IonQ stock price might constantly go up, not like currently having so much volatility in their stock prices? Yeah, I think I, I would say, um, you know, 64 algorithmic qubits mm-hmm. and uh, 256 algorithmic qubits. I think uh, 2025, 2026, mm-hmm. I, I would imagine, yeah, you the, the stock price will probably... I imagine it, it, it'll rip to a certain point and then never mm-hmm. go below that point. It might mm-hmm. go volatile, but it'll just, I, you know, it'll hit at, at that point. Um, that's when there's going to be uh, system sales, mm-hmm. on-premise uh, sales. It seems like every year, every mm-hmm. generation, the hardware gets cheaper, smaller, easier mm-hmm. to manufacture because a lot, you know, I, I, I it's just not well known. You know, quantum mm-hmm. computing isn't yeah. well known among investors, and so once you know a system sale happens or multiple system sales happen, mm-hmm. that's when everyone's attention in the general mm-hmm. population will start, you know, anticipating going, oh, this is like, this is this is a real thing, you know, and the, the incite, excitement and FOMO starts. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have the same expectation, but I've been meeting some famous quantum researchers in Korea and mm-hmm. they were cautious about the quantum technology because it's such a national strategic asset right so it right. might not create any revenue in the near future because if ionq is developing something great u.s government will not export it to other countries so what, what do you think about that aspect i would have to disagree mm-hmm. so what's implied in that that answer mm-hmm. from those researchers are the national security yeah. uh, implications of the technology mm-hmm. so i just think that anyone who's our partner anyone who's a, a close ally Mm-hmm. We are going to want them to have that technology. Uh, will IonQ be selling that technology to China? I mm-hmm. don't think so. <laughs> to Russia? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so uh, to uh, Iran, I don't think they're going to sell it mm-hmm. to Iran. But a viable, you know, is, is a partner of the US. Um, I think they're going to be sharing that technology and it's going to be on premise. And, and you know why I know that's going to happen is, you know, John St. Kim's has spent a lot of time. Mm, in, right. in South Korea talking. Yes. And I don't think he's just going there for just mm-hmm. speeches. I think yeah, there's I think serious so. mm-hmm. deals happening and I think it's sensitive. So adding adding to your opinion, do you have any guesses on who might be their first customer as buying the complete quantum system, which will be happening in 12 or 18 months from now? Oh, that's such a great question. <laughs> um, that is a great question. You know, because... Uh, it would feel like it would be a government agency. Mm-hmm. So either the United States government or foreign government, like that would be the first system sale because they, they had mentioned that, you know, uh, that the people who are interested in buying systems, mm-hmm. they wanted two. <laughs> so for anyone who, anyone who has the ability to make two mm-hmm. system sales two nine figure, each one is like nine figures. Mm-hmm. So to buy two of those, I think it has to be someone who has very deep pockets. And so mm. I would imagine it's uh, my vote would be for, uh, a, you know, either the United mm. States government or foreign government. Mm. Here's the thing. So anyone who is uh, overly reliant on high performance computers, so mm. HPCs, so high performance supercomputers. So that would be like energy, oil and gas, mm-hmm. uh, healthcare, biotech, finance. Mm-hmm. So any of those, any in that group that use, high performance computers uh, would be interested in quantum computing. Mm. I and uh, Korean investors wanted to know how American investors perceive about quantum industry. Like you mentioned before that not many people in America know about quantum computing, right? So what's what's the reality in America? It's just not it's just not well known. You know, like mm. they it just isn't well known. Well, to be honest, it wasn't well known to me until 2021. You know, they had that Marvel movie, uh, Quant- mm-hmm. Ant Man yeah, and Quantum Mania, and then uh, Quantum was on the cover of Time magazine. And so mm-hmm. now you're just starting to see the public imagination mm-hmm. here, the American public imagination, starting to, to to bubble up interest. Also, with that Chat GPT mm-hmm. and AI, now Quantum is starting to get a lot of attention. And if the engine is the machine learning and language models and quantum computing. 
affects machine learning, all of a sudden people are going to start are starting to get very interested in what quantum mm-hmm. computing is. I, I would say right now we're in the very very beginning of the mm-hmm. understanding here in uh, in the U.S. about uh, mm-hmm. of, of, of of what quantum computing is and really what its impact is. What's important is is how quantum computing affects every field of applied science mm-hmm. as a quantum computing use case, every field. Mm-hmm. And so once people start understanding and really uh, internalizing that story, mm-hmm. it's going to be, I, I think there's going to be a lot of excitement because mm-hmm. it can go from here in the US, you can go from unknown to being really popular very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, Once people start understanding that, I think that can happen very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah.